Hey everyone, so I get asked a lot how I do my floating rocks and debris and stuff like that in Unreal Engine and so I thought I'd make a video and kind of go over the process of doing cinema to Unreal Engine using cloners and uh, yeah, so this is kind of the end result here so we'll get started. So we're in Cinema 4D right now and I got Bridge open, the Bridge app in Quixel and uh, we're just going to go for a stone and um, go through my library and I'm going to choose this stone right here and uh, it doesn't matter the resolution just import it because it's going to be a reference make sure your export target is set properly and then uh, just export it into cinema and you'll get an error about a redshift material ignore that you can delete that material actually because again this is just reference <clears throat> And so we're going to just pick a torus for this one. You can do any shape um, because we're going to actually clone the rocks into the um, torus. And so select the, the cloner and then you want to set that, uh, make sure it's on instance. It has to be on instance for it to work properly. Select your geometry and drop it into the cloner. You can get rid of that null. And then we're going to set the cloner type to object. Um, and then we want to, you can hide the, the torus, drop it into the object for the cloner, and then you'll see the rocks appear there. And I'll just increase the count a little bit to 50. And again, it's volume. I set it to volume, so that means the rocks take up the inside of that object, of that torus. And I'm going to add two random effectors, actually. So the first one here, I'm going to do for the rotation. I set it all to 360 because that randomly sets all the rotations to 360 degrees and the scale to one. So the smallest being super small and the biggest being a scale of one. Okay, and then um, just to make sure, uh, we're gonna rename this to size so there's no confusion. We're gonna make sure that it is in the effector slot for the cloner and it is. We're going to create another effector called move and I think we can set the parameters for the position a little lower. Uh, again, this one's going to be the movement of the rock, so I'm going to set in the effector tab to noise. Noise is a little less chaotic than the turbulence setting. And I'm actually going to increase the frames to 200, and we're going to change that in Unreal. So it's going to look really fast and kind of janky right now, but we're going to change all that. So we're going to change the scale down to 40 and the animation speed down to 50. And the scale, the smaller scale affects each rock individually more. So we're just going to adjust these parameters just a little bit. Maybe the scale a little smaller so it's each rock a little, a little more. And again, if you do turbulence, you'll see it's like crazy. So we'll go back to noise. And I'm not exactly sure what the synchronized and indexed do, but they seem to make them a little more uh, smooth. So we're gonna go back, and this this is kind of like up to you, the parameters and stuff, and the and the positions and the scales and the rotations you want to use. You don't have to keep the move for just the movement of the uh, clones. Um, I'm gonna boost up the count a little more, kind of really emphasize all the pieces. Um, as you can see, the movement I'm I'm adjusting that in the random move and it's not quite getting what I want so I'm going to go into the actual size random effector and start messing around with the the position there and that's kind of getting more what I'm looking for actually and so again this is just personal preference you can do whatever you want and um, let's see I think again going to just go through and double check everything maybe make a couple more adjustments I'm gonna actually speed it up a little bit again we're gonna actually slow it down in Unreal um, so we're just gonna save that just simple save um, nothing fancy you don't have to set up anything crazy inside your project you just save it as a cinema file so now we're gonna go into Unreal I had it set to unlit I'm gonna set it back to lit here in a second and make my thumbnails a little smaller a little easier to see everything so data smith, we're just gonna select that Cinema 4D file right into the content folder. Make sure animations is checked if you're doing 
animation work, like the MoGraph cloners that are moving. So just make sure that's checked, and we'll just hit import. And I sped this up a little bit. Um, it doesn't really take that long, I just didn't want to wait. So it brought it in, so here's what you have, and it's not doing anything yet. And that's because we actually have to create a sequence. I'm gonna delete that torus, we don't need that. That's just, it was hidden in the cinema file. It doesn't hide it automatically when you come in here. Let's reset my floor a little lower to zero, zero it out. And you gotta create a sequence for the animation to actually work. So I'm just gonna call it render. We'll just double click on that render icon down there and that'll bring up our sequencer. Gotta drag it over here. I forgot I'm working on one screen, so usually I have two screens open. We'll jam it all into one screen though. So there's the animations folder that we brought in. Um, I accidentally clicked on the, the, the sequence, so <laughs> my back error wasn't there, so I was like, ah oh, crap, so I have to close sequencer, go back over there, double click on the icon down there and it brings it back up to where we just left off. And now if you scrub through, you'll see that it actually plays that animation um, from cinema. And here's where we're gonna, t so the time scale, we're gonna decrease that by half. And I think I'd do a little bit more here in a minute. So it slows down the animation. Um, so you can see it's playing, playing through there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of these clones with nanites so it looks super sharp if you do like an animation. So I'm just going to delete all the lights, the atmosphere, everything, because I'm going to make my own lights and kind of give it a cool, uh, kind of a little bit of foggy atmosphere. So we're just going to do a rectangular light, which I can never find for some reason, even though I use them all the time. Just zero it out, make it movable. Hit G. Um, I didn't hit G. No, there it is. Hit G to show your lights and cameras and stuff in the scene. And I'll, I think I hit G again to hide them, maybe. So I'm just kind of getting everything set up here. I'm going to add a visual effects, exponential height fog. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says volumetric fog. Turn that on. Build. Build lighting only. I always do it this way. Again, I don't know if this is the right way to do it. I found that this is the best way to get cool looking like god ray and vo volumetric lighting. Close, kind of close to octane, which is what I use. And so it doesn't look like much happened. You need to save it because um, I don't save things. But you need to start tweaking the settings. So we're going to, the density, we're going to crank up to 0.1. And then you can adjust the, uh, so the intensity for the light and then there's a volumetric scattering intensity which also adjusts your fog. Now you have to turn on in the advanced tab um, cast volumetric shadows. It's not on by default so you have to turn it on and that's how you get the rays that come the shadows that come from the rocks that we'll see here in just a second because I'll move those up and you'll see the, the little rays start to see there the rays are starting to kind of show up. Now if you turn that back off like it's default then those rays those uh, shadows go away so anyway yeah that's something to keep in mind so now we're actually going to start replacing these clones with the nanite geometry and as you can see the clones are all set up it's like zero zero and then there'll be zero zero one and zero zero two and so they're just kind of in these groups so i accidentally forgot that this is bridge the app and not bridge inside of inside of unreal so i got rid of that go up to add add quixel content and that opens the bridge for unreal engine so i'm just going to type in the name of the rock if you can look over in the outliner there it has that uk wuac3 so i start typing that in there because i have those rocks also downloaded in unreal so i'm going to set that to nanite add it and it adds it right there. So what we're gonna do now is I go over to my outliner and I look for zero, zero. See that the file names and then it's zero, zero, and then it goes eventually zero, zero, or zero, one. So all the zero, zeros are gonna be the first rock. And I have to double click on the subsequence. That's very important. You have to double click on the subsequence to go inside. It's kind of like a folder inside of a folder. So we're gonna select the rock, go over there, right click, replace selected actors with the selection. And what that does, boom, is it immediately replaces your cloner now with a, a high definition nanite geometry mesh. So we're going to go down to the zero ones. We're going to select all those. 
we're going to go to the next rock, go back over, right click, replace selected actor with the selection. And for some reason that sometimes has a bug and it looks like you have a material selected, just ignore that. You'll notice that I do that again here. So this is just kind of like laying bricks. Same thing over, select, go over, replace selection, and so on and so forth. And I kind of do it a little quicker here just because it's the same exact step this each time. Zero 03, replace selected actor, okay? We're gonna go to zero 04. Select all the zero 04s, go down there, right click up there, replace it, and then our last one, zero 05, <clears throat> the last rock, right click just in the area, boom. Okay, and then I drag just, it doesn't matter, just like the last selections, I drag them over into that sequencer. Now I go back arrow at the very top there, and that takes us back into the main sequence folder. Uh, level and now we have all nanite geometry in place of those cloners so now when you have these things floating around uh, they look a lot higher definition and so I'm just gonna add just a little scenery here I'm just gonna add a couple of three uh, actually one 3d asset nanite asset from from Quixel bridge here just add that in I just drag that out and we're just gonna actually just make something real fast here place that over there just duplicate it holding alt rotate it scale it and scale that up just a little to kind of add some variation to what it is <clears throat> excuse me then we're gonna add a camera in just to kind of get a little uh, camera animation so that's under cinematic I believe yeah cinema uh, camera um, and then up there if you notice I selected the camera now I'm just navigating through the scene looking through that camera and now I'm gonna select what I do is I go over there to uh, focus settings down there in the details panel drop that down and you can see where your focus is if you use the click the dropper and just click on something or you can use the draw the draw debug focus plane so that kind of gives you a better visual view of what you're focusing on set your aperture to what you want we'll just drag the camera straight to the sequencer it's that easy that's how you animate cameras I'm gonna set this to a 600 frame animation I'm going to set the output or the out of the animation and just make sure all of those if you, if you notice there I'm gonna actually retime that a little bit more because that rock animation didn't quite make it all the way so now it does maybe even a little little less movement um all right so we're just gonna do a quick camera animation nothing fancy keyframe the transform first frame last frame we'll just go down somewhere that looks semi cool like that maybe looking up a little bit and we'll just keyframe that last frame we'll just go back make sure it all looks okay and it looks looks pretty sweet nothing fancy just to kind of get the the point across and then um pull the rocks down just and again adjust however you want this is just all up to how you want your your scene to look how you want your light to work how you want your objects to look this is just kind of playing Legos right now you're just building out stuff with your assets now all right that's looking pretty sweet um let's see here yeah the indirect lighting that's basically the lighting that bounces off the ground and hits back up on the rocks um, you can adjust that your intensity maybe a little bit my exponential height fog I go down and increase uh, so that's the scattering distribution that's kind of let's see here ex the uh, extinction scale a little bit and then density so uh, this is just tweaking the attributes for all of these to get a look that you want And then make sure everything looks nice and plays well together. Make sure the camera actually goes all the way to the end, the animation. And then once you're happy with that, I don't save it, obviously, because I don't save anything. This is the movie render queue. So this is how you render out your animation. Select render and select your render sequence right there. That's the one we created. This is where you set your size if you want a depth pass which I do which I didn't even use so it, this is irrelevant right here um, but that's how you'd set a depth pass if you want to use it 
um, an anti-aliasing, and then I do game overrides. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it seems to make everything work better. <laughs> Render warm-up frames, and I always set this to 128 or higher. That's kind of like gets the light and all that stuff uh, ready to go. And then set your what size you want your render to go out. Set where you want it to render to. Um, yeah, I kind of messed up right here. Just a seek. I just named it like a sequence folder. And just select that folder, and that's where your output's going to be. Make sure your frame resolution is set properly. Accept, and then you'll see. This is. I think this is real time. I left it real time to see how long it actually takes to render, which is not long at all. So there, it does a render warm up frames, which is super fast, and then it starts going. So it's rendering the frames right now. These are. This is how fast it actually renders. This is 1920 by 1080. You can do a, a 3K, 4K, which takes pretty much the exact same amount of time. So we're looking at, what, 30 seconds to render this 600 frame animation with volumetrics and super high resolution geometry. And we're done. So I'm actually gonna show you how to do the uh, chromatic aberration and kind of these little touches that I would do in After Effects that people ask me about a lot as well. We'll just dive into After Effects real fast. Ignore that, that always pops up because of some add-ons I have. And we're gonna just open the sequence just click on the first frame, import as sequence, import. Just drag it right in there. All right, so awesome, looks great. Uh, so we're gonna do a shift channels. If we look up in the effects and presets, I'm actually gonna type in a shift channels. And what that does is it lets me set this to a solid, uh, and we're gonna set that to screen, screen mode, and then we're gonna set this to only red, so we're gonna turn off green and blue duplicate it two times okay so we're going to go to the next we're going to turn off the red we're going to make this green last one we're going to turn off the red and we're going to make it full blue so now i got rgbs i'm just going to go over two frames one two just drag that one over drag the next one over a little bit and that's where we're going to begin so i hit my b key for the beginning animation and bam there you go now you have chromatic aberration on anything that moves if that makes sense so um, that's how I do it. That's how I do my chromatic aberration. And we're going to add a, uh, what do I add here? Curves, just do a quick curves adjustment, maybe. Again, this is complete personal preference, whatever looks good to you. And then um, let's see, what do we do here? I think we add a noise. Oh, I'm going to add a, a LUT here. And I'm going to do just, again, personal preference. Uh, pull it back, I'll touch. I think I put my noise last. I don't do grain on, on animations. I do noise because grain takes forever to render. So I just do a noise and usually do about like six or seven on the noise. And uh, it just adds that realism to it. So then it starts kind of looking more realistic. And that's your final result right there. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed.